Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Talking Money with Pete. In these episodes, we go through and we talk about general financial concepts, and I use a lot of pictures and analogies to go through and explain those concepts. Now today, we're gonna to be going through and talking about cash flow. So let's go through and get stuck in. Okay, so today we're gonna to be going through and talking about cash flow. Now, I don't have the neatest handwriting in the world, so I asked my partner, Amy, to go through and write this for me. And when she wrote it, she wrote, is lame. And she didn't want me to, but I wanted to go through and actually leave it up because it makes a very good point that I was going to make in the video, which is a lot of people, they don't really know the difference between cash flow and budgeting. And a lot of the times they think it's lame. And so I wanted to go through and uh, confront a lot of those sorts of bits and pieces today uh, because cash flow is really important. It is extremely important. It's it equally as important as investing. And I use the analogy a lot of the time with people, they think the more, oh, I just need a bigger income. The more money I make, I'll be better off if only an extra 10 grand a year. And I use it, the analogy of like a bucket. And they think the more water I put in, the more water I'll have. But what they fail to notice is if you've got a hole in the bottom of your bucket, which is the spending, doesn't matter if you, if the bottom of your bucket is uh, has a massive hole in it, it doesn't matter how much water you put into it, it's all gonna go out. So cash flow is so important and talk about the difference between cash flow and budgeting. So I was gonna go through and talk about that today. And um, so in terms of talking about cash flow, one of the stories I normally use when I'm going through and talking to people is the difference between cash, like a budget is going through and figuring out what you've went through and spent on everything or what you wanna spend on everything. Cash flow is the flow of money and having money in the right spot at the right time. But it's also the difference, cash flow focuses more on structure Whereas budgeting relies a lot more on discipline. And so discipline is only as good as you are on the day. If you're having a bad day, like in a diet with discipline, you're in, then if you're having a bad day, you're more likely to go through and eat the pizza that you probably shouldn't. Whereas with um, structure, if it's structured that you just do or don't have the money, you don't have the access to it, then try and take $20 out of my hand right now. It's pretty hard to take it, something that's not there. So that's the biggest difference with them. And so I talk about the biggest loser. People that went on that show, and I used to know the stats on this, people that went on that show and they lost a lot of weight and then they left the show and a lot of them put that weight right back on. Well, knowledge wasn't an issue. They knew what they should and shouldn't eat. Um, in the show, they had structure that forced them. They didn't have, apart from the, the show to keep things interesting, kept certain temptations there and bits and pieces. But when they went home, if they didn't implement the same structure in their own home, they went back to how they were before. And so that's what we want, we go through and we talk about with cash flow as well, is trying to put the focus onto structure rather than trying to lie on your own personal discipline. So when I go through and I draw a little bit of a picture, so we're gonna change the, the fact of thinking uh, cash flow is lame, Amy, and uh, we're gonna go through and talk about well, most people normally do. So if they're in a couple, they've got two incomes that come in, they may or may not go to the same account or they might go to multiple accounts. And uh, they might have a mortgage that they've got to go through and pay. They might have some credit cards and they might have bills. Sometimes they've got a savings account. So call that S, call that B. And um, so they'll go through and they'll put some money across to savings because they really want to have some savings and they'll um, pay some mortgages and pay. And so they've got bills and they'll pay the bills from the credit card. Sometimes they'll put some money towards the bills, but they'll also put the money towards the credit card. Sometimes they don't get paid every week. They might get paid fortnightly. So rich week, poor week, feast, famine, if that sounds like you. And so they go through and they've got all these different bits and pieces. Sometimes they'll have extra accounts where they try and put money away for Christmas or something like that. And so they'll put some extra money there, but then they'll start robbing from Peter to pay Paul. Well, Christmas is a little while away and this big bill's just come through the annual bill for a registration or something like that. So they'll go through and use that there and they've got extra money this week. So they'll go and pay for things. And then next week they forget that, oh, that bill, we had that bill there. So a lot of this gets very confusing in terms of the biggest point in your head is you don't know whether you, where you stand. You don't know whether you're ahead or behind. And so more accounts where they go through and they squirrel all this little bit of money away. And then when they need the money here, they don't necessarily have it, but they've got extra here. So they have really good intentions of going through and paying it back. And it just gets very, very messy. So 
There's no one best way to go through and do cash flow. It really depends on your personal circumstances. But I'm a really big fan of the KISS method, which is keep it simple, stupid, or keep it super simple. And so it applies to a lot of things in life. But when we go through and we talk about cash flow, a really important part is to reduce the amount of accounts that you've got. And you'll find on the internet, there's lots of different people that spruik lots of different ways. There's no one best one. You've just got to find one that works for you. But one of the big parts that I go through and talk about is let's get away from all this messy structure where we get ahead and behind and we're not sure exactly where we're at. And so what we go through and do is we try and run as much out of one account. So we get all incomes into one account. I draw it in squares to highlight the difference. And so all money comes into that account. All bills get paid from that account. And the next crucial step from that account is to take the focus away from savings. You'll notice in the last point I had an account down here and said so people will try and go through and save and then they come back. And you'll notice a lot of people when they're very driven, like for a cruise or a holiday, they can magically go through and save and then other times they can't. And so what we try and go through and do is take the money Take the focus away from saving and put the focus on spending. So call this whatever you want. I call it pocket money. Just like when you were a kid, you pay yourself a wage. And so one for you and one for your partner, you have your own money and you figure out how much that needs to be. And um, that's on the weekly wage. So one thing, the first most important thing with cash flow is living within your means. So if you earn $100, all of this has to cost less than $100. And so if this is $50 and that's $100, it's never gonna work from the outset. So you gotta either earn more, spend less, or want less, or push out time frames of things. But when we go through and we have a look at this, if you're, if, the first step, and that's where budgets can be really helpful in identifying what you actually spend and once you know that, the flow of things is having money in the right spot at the right time. And so pocket money goes back to what most likely your parents or your grandparents did or what they did to you when you were a child, which is having this money to spend. And so this is what you get every week. And you go through and you focus on spending that. You don't focus on the bills. You don't focus on savings. You focus on spending this money. A lot of people blame their annual registration or their annual uh, rates bill or some big bill that comes around once a year for keeping them poor. Reality is we know 12 months in advance that's going to come back around again. And so if we know that's going to come around, we need to go through and allow for it every week. So we take the focus away from saving and we put it into spending. And so if we know out of your hundred dollars, if this is 70, jeez, if that's 700, you're going to run out real quick. That's 70, and this is 30, you're not going to go through and save anything. So, if this is 20, and this is 60, obviously I'm just using round numbers, that's 80, we're going to save $20 by default. So, very rarely do your bills change. See, a lot of people ask the question, if I gave you a 10 grand pay rise, forget taxes and bits and pieces, but 10 grand pay rise, likelihood of you saving 10 grand extra at the end of the year. Most people, they wouldn't, and they don't. Some people would, they're very disciplined, they'll have it, but then they'll, they're good at saving, but then they'll spend that on a 10 grand holiday that if they didn't get the pay rise, they wouldn't have been on. So if you saved it to spend it on something else, did you really save it? So when we go through and we have a look, if we put the focus on spending, when your pay goes up, does your electricity change? Do your groceries change? Do your rates change? No. So when your pay goes up, you'll save by default. And so we can go through and that can build in this account or that can be gone through and in a different account that's against your house or something like that, in an offset account or something. We can put to savings over here. 
And so there's lots of different options, but that's starting to get a bit more complicated and I try to stay away from a lot of that sort of stuff. But when you just get to the straight cash flow of your money, you pay yourself, you treat yourself like a business and you pay yourself a wage. And that's what you live off. Probably isn't 20 bucks, but it's, you probably don't earn hundred bucks a week either. And so the good thing about this formula is if you get paid fortnightly or monthly, it doesn't matter. You pay yourself pocket money weekly and you go through and you live off that. You pay all the bills out of this account. And so, yes, we keep an eye on this, but we mainly keep an eye on that. And with your pocket money, if you've got extra at the end of the day, it doesn't go back into your bills. It stays there and it accumulates. And then you spend it next week. And if you spend it all on, if it gets put in on a Sunday night and you spend it all on Tuesday night, you're living off rice and beans the rest of the week. You don't go back for more. And if you've got extra, you can put it back. See, what we don't want, we want to avoid that robbing Peter to pay Paul in the other scenario where you don't know whether you're ahead or behind. So if you've got extra there, great, reward yourself. If you spend it all, don't go back and ask for more. You shouldn't have spent more. And if you do that consistently, you haven't allowed enough in the first place and you're not living within your means, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have done it. You should look at it first. You should look at it again. So the big part of this, and there's lots of different variations to it. You figure out something that works for you. We've got a fantastic team that you can work with that can help go through and do cash flows relevant to you as well. But when we look at it in the simple maths, the first part is living within your means. And the next part is having a structure so that you don't have to worry about the money. Your focus is on the spending, which sounds contradictory. If you just focus on spending this $20, the rest of your life, you'll save, you'll save 20 by default. And so it's just going through and living within your means. I hope you found that useful. Hey guys, I hope you found that video interesting and I hope you've got something out of it that you can take away for yourself. If you didn't, we've got a fantastic team that can go through and help customize something for you. And there's lots of other videos on the internet that'll all have their own two cents to go through and chuck in. The point is you've got to find something for you. But uh, from here, we've got, there'll be a name and number down below. If you want to get in touch with our team, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll be doing some more videos in the future. Bye.